Hello, Guardians, and welcome to Destiny Reset, Episode 202. This show is about anything and everything related to the Destiny franchise. If you love playing Destiny 2 as much as we do, you're in the right place. This reset, we talk all about how we can support Guardian Con at St. Jude, hear about upcoming changes to Eververse, and wrap it up with some great Dirt Fam discourse. <laughs> Hello, Guardians, and welcome. It's Arrow Knights and, of course, Cyborg Sasquatch. Hello, friend. Hello, Guardian. How are you today, sir? You know, it's a miracle I made it here, but here I am. You're here. Like it's been always. one of those weeks. Really? I know Delight. we were talking about it a little bit. <laughs> Before it, sounded like, it sounded like your week was a bit hectic. Yeah. It's just, it's just the world, man. Mm -hmm. just, just the world we live in. Always. Just more money, more problems. I don't know. All kinds things. of sayings I can say. It all works out, right? Yep. Yeah. Stay positive. But hey, we've got lots of fun things to talk about this week. Yeah, we Destiny. do. As so per I'm usual, for that. there's uh, always some sort of new post or announcement in addition to the TWAB, it seems like, these days. Yeah. So Yeah, there's a lot of exciting lot of cool stuff. stuff to talk about this week. Eververse, of all things, but we'll get there. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? We'll get there. Yeah, well, uh, we got some announcements. We do. First off, Several. we've had a fun <laughs> giveaway going on for a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, we have. We got uh, winners, I think, here, don't we, Cyborg? You want to tell these guardians? We announced it on Twitter as well, but if you're paying attention, we had a giveaway for a collector's edition of Shadow Keep as well as uh, two blue microphones. And uh, you had to jump on to Twitter and enter with various methods your choice um so our winners were uh their twitter handles were uh under link underscore sin uh worthy d and evil echo one congrats to those guardians yes and thank you for listening and entering our contest we appreciate yes. it very cool yeah that's some so legit loot yep looking forward to assigning some loot to these fine young guardians and um we'll do some more giveaways i'm sure this summer shadow keep approaches and other things happen in the world of destiny so mm -hmm. keep your eyes and ears peeled for uh some more swag we like to give things away and we still have some things from the community the dirt fam and listeners that we're holding on to to give away as well so we're just waiting we for sure the right, right time so yeah yeah cool. keep uh keep listening that's all i can tell you yes we've got some other things going on cyborg on the back end without getting uh too crazy in detail we've been working on moving our hosting service for the podcast for destiny right. resets um we just uh, wanted to move it over to a different service. And uh, as far as you listeners are concerned, you shouldn't notice a difference. Uh, if we've no. done everything that we hope we uh, needed to do on the back end, it should just download like normal, like it always does for you. If you see anything different than that, we would love if you'd let us know via Twitter at Destiny Reset or email us destiny reset podcast at gmail.com because we definitely want to know if something seems like it didn't do what it usually does but we're hoping yep. that won't happen yeah we're now hosted by podbean yes you may be familiar Very, so uh popular yes. hosting service and as a result of that move good news for listeners who like to use spotify got all that ironed out yes and we're now on spotify as well yeah, that that all happened quick too. It was it was very simple. So yeah, we've we've checked ourselves. I use Spotify regularly, daily, and yeah. uh, we're all two hundred and one now. As you're listening to this, hopefully two hundred and two episodes are on their service. So um, yeah, as check a it cool out. bonus there, if you use Alexa and you have your Spotify connected, you can say, "Hey Alexa, play Destiny Reset." Boom. Boom. There we are. That's cool. Playing in your kitchen. 
Yeah, another cool thing about Podbean too, Cyborg was a little bit more familiar with Pod, Podbean than myself. And um, I mean, it's a big site, big hosting service. There's a lot of social features. You can follow us on there. They have their own app, right, Cyborg? You can uh, yeah. download their app and listen to us as well if, if you're not happy with whatever service you're using now. So That's cool. right. Yep. And we can track you guys like nobody's track. business. <laughs> Watch it. Where we, we, we see the downloads. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Anyways, so that's yeah. the thing and everything. Let us know if you're having any trouble this week finding the episode um, or if it's not showing up on your feed, but everything should be smooth. So yeah, that's a win there. excited. Yep, very cool. Yeah, next thing we'll talk about, of course, uh, Guardian Con is coming up very soon. We're like about a week and a half away when you yeah. hear this now. Crazy. Um, Unfortunately, Era won't make it this year. I won't, again. but hey, hey, I don't know if we mentioned this. I think we did. Gathalian already tweeted out and said he confirmed that it wouldn't be over 4th of July weekend or during E3 next year. And don't we always learn the dates at the end of the current Guardian Con? For the last next year? year, we did not. We did last year. I think they, because there was you know, a move New venue, going on. But right, yeah. they did say that this year at the end of the con, they'll announce next year's dates. Yes, so I've already uh, I've already chatted with my wife, and I'm like, I think next year it's going to be a multiple day trip. So <laughs> I, th- I don't <laughs> think it's going to land on the fourth. Anyways, yeah. sorry, Cyborg, you're going to be there this year. So yeah, so I'm a, I'm attending. Fingers crossed. Assuming that nothing uh, nothing changes. At yeah, you got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I'm in the personal to, like, life, <laughs> do a bunch of stuff at once. But assuming everything goes smooth, I'll be there. My accommodations are arranged, and um, it's a two-day event. I'll be there uh, a little bit beforehand, too, but I, I do want to plan a Derp Fam meetup proper during the convention itself um, at some point, like either at um, the convention center where it's being held or you know at a local ice cream shop or pub <laughs> or something where everybody can get together and hang out for a little bit, so... Uh, what I am going to do, like we do every year, uh, we'll open up a Guardian Con channel in the Discord where we can talk and coordinate and say, hey, where are you at? What you doing? And talk to people and put pictures and all that fun stuff. So that's going to be live soon. Um, come and stop by there if you're going to plan to attend because it will help us uh, hang out more because I love to see all the Guardians that come and get to meet people and hang out with friends that I have uh, mm-hmm. from the community. And I know that you will enjoy that too. So make sure that we link up. It's going to be fun. There you if you're go. still on the fence, then come. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. it's Yeah. I've been once and it was an absolute blast. So The events are fun, but go you again. go for the people. Yep. You, go to, you go to hang out with people. The friend That's why game. Yeah. The friend in real game life. is the end game. <laughs> That's right. The IRL end game. There you go. Yeah, what else we got And when we're talking about meetups? Yes, uh, great week to talk about all the meetups. We This is a ways away, but we're getting on this early this year because we're going to try and have a a larger turnout than normal. Um, We do, uh, I know there's, uh, we love to hear about them, by the way, guys. Always let us know when you have a Dirt Fam meetup. We love to hear or love to let people know when they're happening. But we try to have one. We call it uh, the Dirt Fam reunion or really the Dirt Fam Midwest meetup. We usually try to have it every fall, and we uh, landed on some dates. We're going to have it uh, this year, uh, October 10th through the 13th, and it's in Sedalia, Missouri, which is a nice little small, cute town, but it's like right in the middle of the United States. So if you can make it- Flyover states, if you will. Yeah, right. (laughs) If you you can make it, that's awesome. Uh, Just get in touch with- Scorio70, S C O R E O 70 in our Discord, yeah. discord.gg. Yes, discord.gg slash destiny reset. <clears throat> and uh, talk to him, talk to me, Arrow Knight with a zero. You can message us and we can tell you more details. We have a uh, server set up for the, uh, the meetup itself, but there's a link in our discord as well in in the meetup channel so long story short message one of us if you think you might be able to make it there'll be more reminders here and there as it gets closer Um, but like i mentioned um scory's awesome because he kind of puts up 
uh, some some fun I stuff s- for us. I swear, yeah. y'all are conspiring to to make this thing happen on my birthday every year. So I, I know um, you, you know what's hilarious is we were talking about like three different weekends, and we landed on that weekend, and almost I think it was the very next day I was like. Oh no. I think that's his actual birthday weekend. <laughs> it is. Which I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with having a good time on your birthday, but it's also my wife's birthday because yes. we sh- our birthdays are 4 days apart. I know. And if you're smart and you or you, you have a significant other, you know, you don't go out of town on your significant other's birthday. You, <laughs> you don't. just don't. Yeah. You don't leave you them don't. hanging, right? So if uh it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I, and I thought about this, man, and I don't know, maybe, well, we'll just, we'll roll with it for now, and uh, don't change man, it. we would love for you, because the funny thing is, I'm for actually you to be able going to out of town on a wet, for a wedding that same week, so, okay, I am, so that's, I'm, I'm totally going against what I just said, but it's because <laughs> I'm, I'm You're going in with? someone's wedding, so, yeah. You have no choice. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, my wife understands that. But if I was like, "Hey, honey, I want to go play video games at this thing in Missouri," she'd be like, "You're doing what for my birthday?" <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait a second. Like, uh, well, of course, we would love to have you. It's always funny when we're talking about it too, because it's like we start on this weekend, and it's like, yeah, no, and it's usually right around you know when the fall expansion is going to come out, so we don't yeah. want to do it too close to that. And then yeah. you know, it's like, okay, what about this weekend? What about this weekend? But we got to figure something out. Uh, at some point, because we would love for you to come. Year, it's eventually. it's a good ways for you though. That's yeah, that's yeah, a part though. of it too. If, I, yeah. if it was You'd just have the right to, time. And the, the the thing about Sedalia is, it's the classic fly and then figure out how you're going to get there from the airport. Yeah, it's not close. It's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yep. Anyways, guys, love it. Sorry uh, for the tangent. Yes, but if, y'all do if you fun think stuff. Like, what's it? the vibe? What do y'all do there? What's just like? think about an old school land party. We basically just get as much of the dirt fam together as we can and we play video games all night long. We take breaks to eat and chat and that's about the gist of it. Old school land party pretty much, except mostly Destiny, but we play some other games. We usually hook up some sort of Nintendo and play that, do a little couch co-op. I think we had yeah. Cuphead going last year. Um and some other games. It's so a fun I think they time played to hang out with for a little bit. Other derp, yeah, derp fam, and, and other guardians. Anybody who we have, we always have some appearances from other people in yep. other communities too that we're friends with. And uh, mm-hmm. if you're X-ray, usually makes it. Yeah, if you're if you're <laughs> in driving stories. distance, it's like a great way to come. You know, spend like a Saturday or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're actually extending it this year. We're going to do Thursday through Sunday. I actually nice. probably, my, my goal is to be there. I'm usually there Saturday, Sunday. I'm hoping this year to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I probably won't be there Thursday. But if if for some reason you can make this, um, I would uh, love and we would love to see you there. So anyways, we'll remind you as it gets closer. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk more about it as it comes up. We um, will. So if yeah, your birthday meetups. changes, Cyborg, like if that changes for some reason, like the day you were born, just let us know and hopefully you I'll can I'll be sure it. to let you know if anything happens, <laughs> if I find out that I was we really actually you born in. in, you know, January 30th of yeah, you know, and you 1979 didn't never know or something. That, you know, I was celebrating on the wrong day for 30 years. And, yeah, you know. I mean, um, we were not things conspiring things against you. I can, I can confirm that. If you say so. It's not, inten- it's not intentional. Because I was asked... You know, last year, and people were like, "How how are we? How can we get you to go?" And I was like, "Just don't make it on my birthday, because here's why." And here we are again. And I look at the you show. What's going to happen? <laughs> you know what's going to happen? We're going to have this announcement next week, and it's going to be like, "All right, guys, we've switched it." <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, anyways, perfect. all we'll right, get back. So yeah, that's the announcements. Um, and that's all for this week. How about some news? Yes, let's do it, man. Lots How about interesting uh, news this week? Do our usual, to do your usual about. one. Get us in this twab here, cyborg. Um, this week at Bungie, we're prepared for Callus's new challenge, and of course, he's got challenges for us because he just wants to keep testing mm-hmm. us. I suppose. Um, of course, when this went live Thursday, um, this past week, the uh, the Guardian Con uh, marathon on Twitch was live, um, mm-hmm. put on by 
for a drop and the uh, whole Guardian Con crew doing the charity marathon stream. And Bungie had their own block this year, which has been a new thing. And they did a lot of really cool stuff. There was a uh, Bungie bounty going live. So there was like a, a whole crew of different um, Bungie devs and players hosting and playing and talking and reading off donations. They had all kinds of incentives. And man, it just went off. They mm-hmm. raised f- over $400,000, which is insane in a four hour period. Yeah, it's um, crazy. Dim G had to eat a lot of bread. He's getting a tattoo <laughs> now. He's going to dress his bread at Guardian Con. Like, there's just all kinds of f- funny, hilarious moments from this thing. They had Luke Smith talking about Lord of Wolves. They had uh, Dave Samuels live uh, casting with sound effects. So, with yeah, Cosmo getting a yep. awesome multi kill play with his super. It was a lot of fun. I, I haven't watched the whole thing yet because I was at work when this was all going on. I was really getting aggravated. I was missing the fun. But I'm going to go back and watch it while I'm uh, playing this weekend probably. But, um, you know, kudos to anybody that donated to the uh, to the charity stream and uh, as well, you know, got in on that bungee block and contributed because mm-hmm. it was very successful. I'm, I'm yeah, really uh, happy for how it turned out. Shout out to Dirt Fam team member Mitch Slap because I believe he donated on behalf of the Dirt Fam. Nice. Give him a little shout out. Um, it, that's the thing about Guardian Con, man, is everybody gets, of course, all excited because they're going to see all their friends again and and uh, share the passion of destiny and seeing, seeing each other in person. But then, you know, then we get quickly reminded about the charity stream that happens and usually the news it makes because gamers are so nice and yeah and uh friendly and and they donate unbelievable amounts of money so very cool yeah so as of right now when we're recording which is a saturday evening uh it is not completed yet and uh still live but they have raised uh over two million at this point i believe crazy trying to close in on so cool I, th- I, I think they're trying to, to close in on four and uh, Dr. Lupo's block is coming up and he has a million yep. dollar goal, which is insane. But if anybody could do mm-hmm. it, I could see it happening. <laughs> what what did they hit last year? Their goal was... Uh, I think last year was maybe 2.3 or something. Um, yeah. It just amazes offhand. me every year. I mean, they just, they, they do it on purpose, obviously. Yeah, they, they, just they know what... Raise the, raise they the bar do. every year, right? Yep, every year. It's amazing. Yeah, so cool. Very impressive. So definitely a worthy cause. If you're not familiar, you know, the the Bungie, or excuse me, the Guardian Con uh, charity marathon every year is to support St. Jude Research Hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a very worthy cause. So if you haven't, you can still go donate. Um, One-time donation or actually, uh, you know, they're really looking for more people to do like uh repeat giving that's that's what i set up last year so i just have money come out every month uh towards mm-hmm. st jude which is Very like cool, man. you know it, a more like sustainable way to give you know yeah mm-hmm. um for some people you know um but yeah go go if you can you know even you know spot a dollar or five bucks or something like it's a great cause um it basically, you know, kids that have cancer can go and get treatment, like world class treatment, and mm-hmm. them and their families can stay there, and it's all provided for, um, you know, by St. Jude, which is, yeah, can be a no, really big deal for great. families to have to face that kind of, you know, financial challenge and treatment challenge, you know, when their kids are. Um, struggling with a very scary disease, right? So, mm-hmm. St. Jude. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what? If you're thinking about supporting us on Patreon, go donate to this. Yeah, just go give your money to St. Jude's this month. Yes, we appreciate your support, but yes, go give it to St. Mm-hmm. Jude's if you if you won't. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't need, we'll, we'll live. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your family will live on. But the kids... Kids. Very cool. Do it for the kids. Um, so moving on from that, um, they're talking more about season of opulence. Um, 
kind of talking about the roadmap a little bit. Next stop is uh, the 25th. This coming reset, we get Menagerie Heroic Mode. Mm-hmm. I kind of forgot awesome. this was a thing for the first week or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it just kind of left my radar. Yeah, so they detail what we can expect from Heroic Mode. Um, they're going to increase the power difficulty. It starts at 750 um, and it increases to 770. Mm-hmm. Which can sound challenging. Definitely heroic. Uh, matchmaking is disabled. You must form a fire team to enter. There are weekly curated gameplay modifiers uh, that rotate per boss. Um, unlike normal mode, you can hit a failure state. So extinguish is active. Uh, if your team wipes, you get sent to orbit. Mm. Yikes. And then as well, um, encounters never repeat. So if you fail to reach 100% progress towards the boss after completing each counter once, you'll be returned to orbit. So what that means is, you know, Yikes. you can get different progress on different ones. Like one you can not do so great, and another you could do awesome. And, you know, you're, you're trying to fill that bar up, right? Um, so you don't have to 100% like do each challenge perfectly, but you do have to make that progress to get to the boss you know by like the seventh or what have you encounter Mm -hmm. um i think that's how many there are right and there's seven i want to say there's seven different encounter maybe six i don't remember exactly i feel like i have the same ones come up pretty often (laughs) yeah um and then there are heroic mode specific triumphs rewards and challenges I'm most intrigued by those rewards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to get there. Um, they said there's not going to be a race, but they are excited to see how people customize their experience with challenges, show off skill, and etc. cetera. Um, next up, they talk about pride. Um, Bungie has a pretty cool thing called the Bungie Diversity Committee over at their staff and headquarters. And they talked about how you can express your pride and celebrate the LGBTQIA plus family. Um, So they're doing something for pride month. Uh, They've got a pride pin for sale in the Bungie store. Um, Keep in mind if it is sold out, uh, which it has been, you can, uh, you can click a button to get on a wait list. They'll notify you when there's more. They said it is going to be, you know, sold past, you know, this current month. Um, So don't, I guess they're trying to say don't stress too much about that, right? Um, and then they have some notes about what pride means to some of their uh, designers and um, folks over there. So go check that out and read this. Um, they also what did I mention something else. That might have been it. But oh yeah, so the proceeds from the pin go to a um, nonprofit called It Gets Better. So you're contributing to something. If you want to support that cause, um, you can do so by purchasing that pin. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Um, There you go. Next up, they have some new or some continued FAQs um, with what's coming up, you know, this coming season and et cetera. Um, So they talk about fall um, and what's included with Bungie store purchases of physical editions. So you'll get... A digital, if you buy the collector's edition physical on the Bungie store, um, they're going to digitally deliver the uh, the code, I guess, for the game proper. So you're not going to have to be waiting, um, I assume, <laughs> for your box to show up. Um, so you'll get a digital code, and then you'll also get a soundtrack with that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Um, very cool. And then they talk about what you can expect in the physical bundle. Um, They mentioned several times delivered on or before September 17th. So it sounds like they're promising to have it in everybody's hands, you know, by that day, which Mm -hmm. is good. Um, So they talk some about shipping, when you should expect it to ship, you know, who do you call if you have a problem, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And then they go on about some things that we've talked about before, like, you know, what content you need to purchase if you want to do cross save, um, merging characters and triumphs and items and stuff like that. Stadia, we've talked about that before. Um, 
And then we've got some known issues with Season of Opulence. Go check these out if you're having any treble. There's a whole bunch of different Not a huge things. list, but a decent list. <laughs> Those are decent little lists. Those are decent little lists. As usual, you know, bugs show up, rear their ugly heads. These things happen. can imagine trying to track them, dude. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Movie of the Week. Um, the featured Movie of the Week is a three-player Crown of Sorrow. Just ridiculous. Please stop making stuff me feel bad me about when I myself. see these. It's cool to see these again, though, because just reminds me back when I used to raid when we did this stuff on Crota and and things. We would drop a fire team member every reset and try to do it with one less person. Oh, Crota man. was the classic, right? You obviously could solo Crota, but we got it down to two man in it. Um, but it just takes me back when I see all these two and three and four man. Yeah. It gets, I feel like those things get harder and harder because the like the way that they've built raids and mechanics mm-hmm. become have well, we become so much more complex, bit. you know? Yeah. Yep. But um, yeah, we're seeing it again. Yeah. And then um, Cosm or Dimji closes it up, talking about a little Iron Banner talk, and getting ready for Menagerie Heroic mode. Now, in other news. Um, one of the biggest items this week was a post on the 19th from the Destiny dev team about fall Eververse changes. Mm-hmm. So you want to you wanna cue this up? So you want to talk to us? Yes, definitely. Yeah, this was uh, kind of a surprise, I guess. Um, anytime Eververse comes up, it's always an interesting thing, right? Uh, yeah. This was a, a pleasant surprise, though, I think, for most. Um, obviously, we'll get into it a little bit more, but they uh, they kind of throw at us that they've hinted that Eververse will be changing some. Obviously, we've already seen the facelift on it and things of that nature. They say, uh, we've already made a number of changes to Eververse and Season of Opulence, and we're going to make more changes to the economy store and armor this fall. So it's kind of, in a nutshell, they, they tell us about how it stinks in the Eververse store when you find something that looks cool, but it's got bad perks on it. Um, so they say, basically, we're done with that. As of September, all Eververse armor is being converted into universal ornaments. These universal ornaments can be applied to all of the legendary armor sets we're releasing this fall. They override the look of your equipped gear while preserving the perks, mods, and stats of the original item. So basically, they've got an image here. If you haven't visited Bungie.net yet, um, go check this post out. Basically, it's think about selecting a mod how you would do that right now. But when you hover over that node, it shows you all of the different types of, uh, let's say a helm that you can select from. So transmog in a sense, transmogrification, if you're not familiar with that, yeah. I mean, Diablo works, is one of the best. It works just yeah. like the ornament system we have now, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. which I think is great. Yeah. Like it's a great system. Yeah, definitely. And you know, they say, uh, Any Eververse armor you have acquired in your collections will have its universal ornaments automatically unlocked for use on new legendary armor. So, you know, we've got some bright dust stuff to talk about too, but Cyborg and I were talking before the show, this immediately makes you wonder, uh, will we see this on things outside of Eververse? You know, that's speculation. We don't know. But as far as just Eververse alone, I mean, I'm digging this. Cyborg, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think it's a great change, especially because... I don't want that stuff taking up inventory. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we, and we were talking about that before the show. We, um, we have so many times we probably should just hit record and edit it in. We, we're, we've mentioned, you know, each season, come on, like give us 50 more slots. We're running out of space in the vault. Of course, we could clean it out more, but we just like to hoard things. This, you had a good point. I mean, you don't need to give us extra slots in our vault if you start incorporating systems like this because we don't, we don't need it in our vault. We've got it yeah. as an ornament. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. Um, so cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. It seems like the fall is going to turn into one of those, not only a decent expansion drop, but a lot of system changes because, you know, of course, we've heard about Armor 2.0 and all that good stuff. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping so that. I'm, I'm excited. So obviously we're going to have legendary armor sets and um, you'll be able to use all the Eververse gear on them. But what I'm hoping is that some of the new armor and maybe even some of the old armor gets condensed into Mm -hmm. this way. Like imagine, you know, maybe all the um, armor of like a certain type 
you know, say for instance, all right, if they come out with like a new crucible armor set next season, then you're, you can get that set and then maybe you can apply the old armor set as a, you know, an ornament or what have you, right? Ornament, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be great. Um, how do you think, how would this work with like raid armor and stuff? Because that's always a hot topic, right? You, you think you still have to go get your, you have to get it regardless. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If they, if they incorporate it into other things, like you're saying crucible. So that, that factor would still be there because you have to acquire it. You're not just getting access to it. So there's no worry there of, um, people running around with sets that they didn't actually do the activity, I guess. Yeah. There's no concern with that. I don't know. Yet. Hopefully this, I I think it would make sense if they created an armor system where the armor, like you have these armor sets and, you know, you have, I guess, because we're getting a lot of stats, like mm-hmm. new stats coming in. We don't know the whole picture, but it would make sense if, the armor type dictated, okay, you have a heavy armor, you have a light armor, you have an agile armor, right? They give you different stats for those things. And then you can, all the rest of the stuff that you can, like armor sets you get are just cosmetic. Mm -hmm. And you put on the armor set that you want, you slot in the mods for the perks that you want, right? And then you can change the look you know, with this, that, or the other, like, that would make a lot more sense to me, like long term, and uh, and really allow them because, you know, there's the issue right now that um, they it seems like they want to continue to build on Destiny Two, and mm-hmm. not only is like the content itself going to really start to sprawl, but so will the gear, and there's got to be a way to control inventory not only for the player but because all those data points across millions of accounts turns into a lot of data dude right yeah i mean we were talking about that last week um different aspects of that anyways so so we'll see um i don't know i I don't want to get ahead of it but this could kind of give us a clue into what we may see with all armor which i think is a good track Mm -hmm. i agree Next, we're going to talk about Bright Dust. Yes, Bright Dust. Basically, they they spell it out here pretty simply. Historically, the best way to earn Bright Dust in Destiny 2 has been to buy a bunch of Bright Engrams, shard everything from the Engrams, build a giant bankroll of Bright Dust, and then spend it when Warlock, Diorom, Kara Helmet shows up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in other words, you just end up breaking down a whole bunch of stuff to get your Bright Dust. Yeah. Um, they were wanting to change that. They... I mean, naturally, and and probably from some feedback, they realize that's not the best. Um, what's the word? Uh, mechanic? Not mechanic. System. I'm trying to think of a system. Yeah, I'm trying. I can't. I'm, I'm not thinking of my word here. Um, anyways, they're adding bright dust as a reward for completing Vanguard Crucible and Gambit bounties. Basically, a play to earn reward kind of concept. So we want all players to earn dust for playing. Not, I thought it was funny. They just said dust there. Not for spending money and destroying a bunch of items in their inventory. After you complete all of your bounties for the week, there will be an additional avenue to keep grinding out bright dust. Um, so moving on, they go, go on to say it's pretty uncool to go to the collection screen and spend bright dust to get shaders or ghost shells. So we're going to fix that too. Beginning September 17th, Eververse items in your collections will cost glimmer and legendary shards. Uh, so basically, if you kind of want to keep pulling something uh, like an exotic sparrow they mention out of your uh, collections, it's just going to cost you those materials, not bright dust. Um, they're also making some changes to dismantling Eververse items. Lastly, because we are changing the cost of pulling things out of your collections, Eververse items will no longer dismantle into bright dust. So they're really changing it up on us because that's what we're used to doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this fall, Eververse items will dismantle into legendary shards and glimmer, of course, because that's what you'll buy them with. Uh, however, that means right now the absolute best thing you can do, this is important, with all the Eververse items you don't use regularly, armor, sparrows, shaders, ghost shells, transmat effects, is dismantle them. 
Sitting on a pile of midnight talons or metro shift from your year one stockpile, shard them all, basically, they say. So you want to get that bright dust bankroll set and pretty before <laughs> fall gets here. Um, yeah, once that which will be interesting. the 17th, you know, anything that you have in your collection that's an Eververse item now that would normally turn into bright dust is not going to turn into bright dust anymore. Right. So, that's why so you can already start making up. room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is cool. Uh, and, it, and I don't think we said this early on, but this is from Luke Smith again. Uh, we got another post from Luke Smith here coming up too. So it's, it's cool to be hearing from him after, uh, a while now. Um, he does give us a kind of a recap. So just so you, just you guys can hear this, all Eververse armor is being converted into universal ornaments. So they do use the term ornaments there. I don't think they used yeah. that early on in those first mm-hmm. couple paragraphs. Uh, universal ornaments can be attached to any newly acquired legendary armor. Bright dust is going to come from doing bounties, not dismantling things you spend money on. And Eververse items can now be pulled from your collections with glimmer and legendary shards instead of bright dust. Nice. So what do you think about this overall, man? Uh, I mean, on paper, it sounds fine. It's always that classic. Like I want to see how the, the gameplay feels in the loop when we get it, um, I, I mean, it seems good. I, I'm I'm fine with, I like the collection part of it, just paying legendary shards and glimmer to get things back out of there instead of spending bright dust. I don't ever really have a bright dust problem. I usually always have enough for what I want, but I do kind of, uh, I am a little tight with it, I guess. I do think about my purchases. Um, so uh, I've, I've still spent maybe a total of $10 at Eververse in Destiny 2, and maybe a total of 10 in Destiny 1. So they mm. don't get me in that regard. <laughs> but I like these changes. I mean, I, I think it's good. That it's kind of going along with everything else. They're rethinking it. They're looking at it. They realize the, the system kind of doesn't make sense or it's not fun. And uh, um, But ultimately, I mean, they still want to make money. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. You know, what's your take on it? I think it's a it's another move in a positive direction for um, especially armor. I think it's always been kind of borderline with players on, okay, well, you know, we're, we've got cool armor and it's getting stuck behind a paywall and then it's got perks on it too. So sometimes you, you get lucky and you're getting something great that has a perk on it and you paid for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or you're getting stuff with garbage perks and you don't want to use the armor even though it looks cool because the perks aren't good. So you're not even using it even though you paid for it or you got it through that system, you know? Um, right. So I think that's kind of killing a problem before it becomes a bigger problem. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bright Dust economy, I don't know. I, I think we need to see... Like the changes to the new Eververse store, I feel like there's too much stuff sold for silver. Um, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. So I, I look at something I want and I see silver. But again, I'm probably not their average player because as soon as I see silver, unless it's something I really, really, really want, yeah. I'm like, no, immediately. And there's there's even things being sold for silver that I might would buy, but I feel like their prices are a little steep for my taste. Right, you know, yeah, like, too, because I'm not you have that eight bucks on a sparrow, like right, yeah, because well, you here's have the that thing. moment where you want to support them because sure. you're not paying a monthly subscription, right? But yeah, if it's if you feel like it's too much, then it immediately deters you from doing so. I think in a loot game where you get so much loot and every season the loot changes, like sparrows. I mean, did you, you know how many sparrows are in this game, and you know how many have earned that I like to. So if I'm going to mm-hmm. buy one that I might drive for a week or whatever, I'm not spending $8 on that. Right. This is, that's yeah. kind of a different discussion. And that I'm sure that as they get more data, they'll, they'll see what sells and what doesn't, and it'll be up to them to make those decisions. But I think there needs to be more things sold for Bright Dust directly um, mm-hmm. and not just like a footnote page with seven items a week that rotate. Yeah, I was going like, to say. <laughs> we're getting closer and closer, but we're still not quite there. I'm still um, like waiting. To, well, should I buy that? Because I don't know. Is it going to be sold for Bright Dust next right, week? Right. Yeah. See, I'm waiting for the um, 
the beloved uh, ornaments because I picked yeah. up the Ostringer one when it was up. So now I'm like the same exact thing you just said. I'm like, I'm just going to hang out until see if it comes up. But will it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yep. So um, overall, I love though, that you earn it though, right? You earn it while you play. Do you like that aspect? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, it's similar to how you earn the engrams. Oh, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. almost wondering if those are going to stick around. I, You know, I hope if they don't, something does, because that's something that I I think we both did way back in the day. when we Remember we used to get five moats for leveling up? Yeah. Uh, I was like, man, come on. We got to do something like Diablo where you get something after you hit max other than five moats. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love that you get something still because it always feels good to level up. If, if you're right and they take that away, I hope something replaces it because that's just a fun feeling to always, you know, continue to have even after you hit max level. Yeah, I'm not really into the best of year one in Graham. Like, yeah, I'm only in it because I still want my selfie emote and I haven't um, gotten it. Yeah, yeah, you get a chance <laughs> but that's that. it. I agree with you. No doubt. Otherwise, no doubt. yeah. Well, um, yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I think this is all. It's it's definitely more consumer friendly. Mm-hmm. The way that they're, and they're also like, I, I, I think they're going to move in a way from loot boxes, you know, for lack of a better term altogether, both because they're not ideal and they're also getting ahead of the game because it may be before long, like those aren't, you know, be legal. The, yeah, what it seems to be what, um, uh, some people are pushing for is that you can't put those in games that are uh, rated, you know, below like M or something like that. And mm-hmm. if they want to keep their T rating, they're not going to be able to have those. So it seems like, all right, you know, let's make these changes and just do away with them entirely. And I think that's the smart mm-hmm. move. And it's going to, yeah. it's going to give them more goodwill from players and probably make them more money in the end. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that is the news. There, there was go. a uh, little blog post they put up. Now, as part of the Bungie stream, one of the stretch goal incentives was to get uh, get old Luke Smith to come and talk about Lord of Wolves. Um, so they put up a little blog post of what he talked about during the stream, in case you missed it. Um, so to sum it up, you know, they basically they realized it was kind of an outlier, and they they did consider. Um, making it unavailable to equip, but decided ultimately not to. And uh, they mentioned that there will be a balance, kind of a light balance patch coming up in mid-July, so we can expect some changes there. Um, they're also going to do some kind of like emblem to commemorate. If So if, if you play a match of Iron Banner this week, you'll get an emblem to commemorate the Lord of Wolves havoc that happened this week. <laughs> if you missed it and you weren't playing or you weren't paying attention, uh, Lord of Wolves can do some really nasty stuff in the crucible in the right circumstances, mostly on PC, uh, I think is where it's really obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I've seen so much footage of how brutal it is, but I actually haven't gotten mine out at all. I haven't ran into it much either though. Um, but again, on console. I think the first you know, think like heard... couple days, as it like started to hit social media and it became like people became aware of it. I think everybody was like, "Oh, well, let's try it." And then, especially mm-hmm. on console, it's not as effective, and so people weren't as you know right, interested. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know it's funny. This happens every now and then, and it's yeah. you know it's it's like. We still talk about Prometheus Lens when that happened. There were right. several of these occurrences back in D1. It's kind of just part of playing Destiny, yeah. being a Destiny Sometimes, fan. like, <laughs> things, you know, it can be fall annoying. The cracks, but, and yeah, you run yeah. into it, it's, it gets a little crazy. But uh, I was actually, I think I was gone the weekend that Prometheus Lens happened, and I'd, I didn't see like the light show that occurred. Um, that was so crazy. So, it yeah. was really fun, actually. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. You just continue to... You remember those things, you know? Yeah. So, while they're annoying, maybe 
during the time. Uh, it's usually pretty entertaining to to reference back to them, mm-hmm. you know, a while later. So yeah, we'll see what they do. Member, member, Lord of Wolves. <laughs> so uh, that is the news this week, man. I think that's it. I think that's yeah. all that's going down in Destiny this week. I could have missed something. I don't know. Tweet me if I did. There's no telling. Yep. There's always something, dude. Well, well, cyborg. Yes. Nope. No. Don't even do okay. it. All don't right. even. How was your reset, buddy? <laughs> this is good, man. Um, kind of taking it light this week, but doing stuff and things. I finally finished my truth quest. I didn't finish that last reset because I needed nice. to like go do one more nightfall or something and. How long is it? Because I'm still on step two, which is step one, um, really. Go do an ascended it's not challenge. not too bad. Yeah. No, nah, it's not too bad. I've been rocking my last words so much, dude. I, think I, I just don't even have room for it. The longest part is um, having to get people to go and do your three nightfalls, mm-hmm. which, I mean, that you can LFG that, but you have to have it at a power handicap of 100. So you want to make sure you've got that set correctly. Um, and then you've got it. So... <laughs> Here's my gripe. So you have to, when all that's done, so you can go get the weapon, you have to go play the Warden of Nothing Strike. Mm -hmm. You can't do it in a Nightfall. It's got to be the regular, like, launch the strike from the director. Okay. Mm. And you have to be Ascendant, which means you have to drink a, a, a Queen Foil's Tincture. Uh, Okay. And then... You have to go through the strike and you have to find these relics. And what they look, they're awoken relics. What they look like are the, uh, if you know the daily missions on the dream, in the dreaming city where you have, uh, like these little orbs that you've got to go around and like play with sometimes. That's what they are. And, um, you have to find five of them. They're up at, I think there's actually like seven, but once you find five, it tells you. So every time you find one, like you interact with it and it tells you an ascendant um, platform has appeared. And what it's doing is it's spawning these platforms at the end of the strike that take you to the chest. All right. So that's how it works. The problem is like it took me like an hour and a half to do this because what's, what it's not clear about is like, at first, I thought every person that was doing it in the strike would have to like interact and find these relics. Even if, cause I was just going in and loading it without a fire team. And so what was happening was like somebody would hit one and then it would disappear. And I was like, wait, I didn't get to hit it. So I didn't know if it was going to work for me. So. Then I kind of figured out like when you hit it, it disappears and it gives a message for the whole team and that seems to work. So like third strike in, I'm I'm like, okay, now I get it straight. I figured out where some of them are, you know, and I finally get, like get through the strike and I think everything's straight, get to the end. My freaking tincture had worn off. Oh no. And I was out. And I couldn't uh, jump on the platform. So I'm like, all right, so I go buy some more tinctures, right? Back at it. So then I am like, all right, I got to get this done. And uh, I'm trying to think what other problem I ran into. Something else happened. I don't know. All in all, this took like two strong. hours to do, and it should not have taken like two hours to do this <laughs> quest. But uh, word of advice, like, watch a video find where the things are because some of them are hard to find understand that other people can activate them and that's okay make sure you go this was the other problem i was having i kept loading up the strike and it would put me in the middle or the end of the strike so Mm -hmm. i couldn't necessarily know if they had activate them or you know go back and hit them so i kept having to reload the strike it's like can they just made a mission for God's sake? <laughs> like they, the, the, this is my only complaint is like they're making these quests, but they're not creating any new content with it. 
Yeah. And it gets yeah. frustrating for me because of problems like and that. And giving you an old exotic. Yeah. Yeah, you're giving me an old exotic once. using an existing strike, and you're giving me quests that I wasn't asked to do anything new. It just kind of feels, I don't know, half Yeah, done. that's where you, I mean, you've mentioned that you're kind of getting worn out a little bit on the nostalgia, so it yeah. makes sense. And I, I don't, I didn't really find any of the quest or any of it particularly fun. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay, I got the weapon, great. Now, the weapon's fun. It's got great tracking, you can put three rockets in the mag, works great. I mean, that's all great. But the implementation wasn't there for me, personally. Yeah, that makes sense. So, okay. complaints, I guess. Everybody's got them. Um, what else did I do? Done some more of the raid, the new raid this week. Trying to learn that. We were working last night on completing a couple like specific triumphs for the raid. And we got one of them done. And then one of them's not for the title, but it's just a triumph. Like one of those, like everybody use a specific subclass element. So we were trying, mm-hmm. we we're doing it on Boyd uh, in that last in boss getting a little tricky without everybody's used to using a well. <laughs> so we're working on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got to go back and try to finish that. But, uh, what else did I do? This play, just doing some menagerie stuff. And I'm actually uh, looking forward to playing on my warlock in, uh, the menagerie. Um, yeah, just because well, radiance, it seems like it's good everywhere. It's just good, it's man. Nice. It's just good at everything. You just, well, mm-hmm. just, man, just well, it just helps with all things. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they took all the best parts of what made Titans awesome and gave them to the Warlocks <laughs> and did it better. And it makes me sad. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. So how was your reset? Dude, my reset's been great. I uh, um, got a couple of play sessions in. Uh, was planning on playing more, but man, I've, I'm like... Been- crashing at night dude i don't know what the deal is i'm wide awake and then before i know it i stop moving and i'm out cold wake up it i think i had one of the one of my play sessions this reset i think i fell asleep and then woke back up at like two in the morning and it stayed up till like 4 30 and played so i could get some get some time in (laughs) yeah i've done that Uh, and got a couple more hours of sleep yeah yep yep it's all over the place but anyways I actually, I was super close to finishing this Pinnacle quest last season, but I just, it was, I knew there wasn't a reset factor on it with a rank. So uh, it's the Oxygen SR3 Pinnacle weapon yeah, from last yeah. season. I just, I had a little bit more on it. I think I had like less than 10% on the strike runs and some more precision kills to get. And uh, I finished it up. I was just doing powerful stuff. And I was like, all right, I'm going to stick in these strikes for a minute and and finish this. So I got it. And I'm enjoying that thing, dude. I put a um, uh, Dragonfly spec on it. And a lot of people recommended that I do that when I threw up on Twitter that I finally got it. And uh, um, anyways, they uh, they recommended it. And I had already thrown it on there. And I was like, I hope this stacks. You and I were talking about that. And, uh, I, I'm liking it, dude. I I'm seeing some people told me, and I, I'm definitely seeing like scouts. I mean, the scouts need a buff. It doesn't feel super strong, but man, when it procs, when you add all those, you know, the pinnacle perk and then the, the mod and the dragonfly base perk, I mean, it's pretty potent, but it's just like that initial base damage. Um, it reminds me of hung jury, I guess, but I have this thing with scouts, dude. I feel like I am wearing my controller out for some reason with scouts, I don't know why, because I don't feel like that with like hand cannons. Obviously, they shoot a little slower, but um, I, I just like full auto scouts. I like to just be able to hold that trigger down. Um, so maybe that's just me. I don't know if you, if do you use scouts much? Have you I used use this some thing much? And, um, Polaris Lance is my favorite, but I don't know. Some of them feel really plinky and weak, you know, mm-hmm. but if they're the right impact and stuff and the right. RPM, I, I like them for certain stuff. I I, I don't mm-hmm. like full auto scouts though because they can tend to get like most scouts. The the reward is in getting the precision shots, and yeah. full auto s- scouts can be a little tricky with that. So I usually find I like to have that finesse of being able to control the the shots myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I just, I've always, um, 
liked full auto, but I don't use scouts a ton. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, this is an example of these pinnacle uh, quests and, and weapons because I kind of don't want to put the thing down right now. Uh, I can't wait till armor 2.0 because, you know, my whole build is and PVE is auto rifle, shotgun, rocket launcher mm-hmm. or heavy machine gun. So it's like, you know, I got to slot some other gear on if I want to get those scout perks and stuff. But yeah. I'm really enjoying it, though. Um, it, it's been a lot of fun. I got, uh, I keep getting old exotics, dude. I got, uh, Soros and some boots. I don't even remember some old boots again, this reset. I don't know what is going on. I mean, I, I think I have this stuff. I'm on my main character. Uh, obviously you can get, I assume you can get duplicates of old stuff. Yeah, I don't, but I this don't is like think the, the do protections work anymore. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been brought up. I haven't seen it talked about. There's so, I guess there's so much other stuff to talk about right now. But I, I'm I'm not joking. I've gotten like eight exotics in the last three weeks. And they've all been like, a lot of them have been really old. Like yeah. base D, D2 exotics. But anyways, that's okay. They were good uh, uh, power power progress. So that works. Yeah. I did do some, uh, I did a little bit of Iron Banner. Uh, not a lot. I actually, I'm. I was pretty motivated to do Iron Banner this reset, but I've only played, uh, I did the power thing and, and I haven't jumped in as much as I want. Um, which I guess we can talk about for a minute here in a second about that quest. Uh, it seems to be kind of a slog. I've, I've seen some players talking about it, but I'm hoping to dive into Iron Banner some more this weekend. I did do some, uh, menagerie. I, um, did now that I've got my beloved, I mentioned last week, which that thing, dude, I'm getting used to it. It was, even being a sniper, having snapshot and quick draw on that that beloved was so quick. You like it, huh? but I'm getting yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm getting used to it now. Like I, I was so used to my Aachen, it was a little bit slower, but now I'm getting used to how fast the thing is. But I've been grinding for the the hand cannon, of course. Now the the Austringer, I think I've yeah, I think I've gotten seven or eight of them to drop and two decent ones, one for PVE and one for PVP. I haven't gotten that. The one you hear everybody talking about, I want that range, 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 and then Eye of the Storm. Um, <laughs> that's the one I want for PvP. But anyways, man, yeah, I uh, that's pretty much what I've been up to. I'm going to try and get some Iron Banner in this weekend. Uh, again, I've, I, we talked last week, you know, about the Iron Banner tweaks and stuff. I'm, I'm actually more than I have been in a while kind of motivated to get in there. Those enhanced perks are cool. Um, I think I'm kind of getting the Crucible itch. I played a lot of PvE last season, so... Um, I'm I'm kind of in the crucible mood right now, so that could be part of it. But crucible uh, mood, if you will, crucible mood. There you go. Crucible like mood. That. Did you say you played? Uh, we talked a little before the show. You not play much Iron Banner? No, I haven't touched it. I've only I heard people it. complain about it this week. Well, that quest is what I'm hearing a lot about it. Yeah. Apparently, it's a pretty good slog. There's a lot of steps, yeah, and it's yeah. not account wide. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were talking, I didn't even realize for sure. That's, that's the only way you can get the armor with the enhanced perks. Is that right? I think, yeah. So from what I understand as you complete each step, it gives you a piece of armor. And then once you've unlocked each one, then the armor can drop for you from packages Mm -hmm. and have random rolls on them. Okay. Yeah. I've got, I'm still on the first step of that. So uh, apparently there's, I don't know how many steps there are, but there's apparently multiple. Yeah. There's a bunch. <laughs> Obviously at least at enough least five, to get right? them unlocked. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm planning on jumping into that more. That, that was part of the conversation I saw this week. And then another one I saw, we were talking a little bit was uh, about the menagerie people liking the, being able to farm five or six drops at the end of each run, uh, and hoping that Bungie doesn't fix that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, we were talking about that a little bit before the show. I totally, I like see both sides of it. It's a classic destiny problem. I mean, we've seen things like this, uh, in the past, similar to this anyways. And I'm kind of of the mind of like a happy medium. I, I totally get, it's a decent activity run of something to get maybe more than one chance. Maybe let us have a couple chances, but I, I'm also of the mind of like, okay, at some point we got to actually run an activity yeah. to get like six chances at something, you know, might be a little excessive. <laughs> right. You do still have to get the runes. I mean, you do have to go out and get the runes. Yeah, you gotta but, get the runes um, and you gotta play through the activity. And it's not like a short 
It's not the shortest activity. I mean, you can make it short if you're really good. Yeah. But I've had a I've had it drag out early on, dude. Yeah. But now it seems like people are getting it more. It doesn't take as long. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you still have to do it, and it takes a little time. And I get the sentiment that it's nice to be able to get you know hit a bunch of rolls on something. But it's tough because once you give people something, you, if you take it away, they feel like they're right, losing yeah. something. Mm-hmm. So, yep. what do you do? It's just that classic balance, right? I mean, we to get. I mean, there's a lot of chances. So, like, I've I've gotten, I've done it, you know. And what we're talking about is, if you don't know, you can open the chest and run out and refresh into a different area and come back and open the chest again once you slot your chalice. And it's, you know, I've gotten like four Austringers on two different runs when I had the runes, and and it's great, you know. Don't get me wrong, but you know, at a certain point, you there's a lot of options. I get that. There's a lot of different roles, but it's at a certain point we're running back into the gunsmith, right? We thought that would be cool, but it wasn't. And if you get the role you want, I mean, part of destiny is grinding. So if you get six or seven chances at the role you want, you're going to get it so much quicker, which is cool, but it's almost like a, a subconscious thing. Like the grind, you take so much of the fun quote unquote grind out of the game when you run an activity once and get seven chances at something that you know it's it's just always an interesting position of course we want something sooner but it's like in the end how much gameplay and fun did you take out of your own experience um by doing that you know, I don't know. I, don't get me wrong. I love getting four chances at the Ospringer that I want. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. actually, I keep I keep wanting to call it Ospringer, but it's Ostringer, isn't it? Yeah, with a T. Yeah, I keep wanting to add a B in there for some reason. And I think Anyways, it's... What do you... What do you uh, I think it's... Uh, I think that word has something to do with, with birds. <laughs> I don't remember what there it was. What was the... Let me get it. Cause I don't it, know why I keep wanting to uh, put a B in there for some reason. Springer. Anyways. What are you grinding for in a menagerie? What are you looking for? I'm going for like all crucible weapons. Not I really hear the fusion in pretty, particular. I haven't. I just have started to try to get one of everything and I haven't, re- yeah. I haven't really chased anything in particular. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind getting a good uh, beloved, you know. Yeah, but I always I always have to look unless it's like hand cannons or something. I always have to look up like awesome PVE rolls, but I immediately know what I'm going for for the Crucible, and that's like that's always the first ones I'm I'm hunting down. Uh, but I hear the fusion's pretty pretty potent as well, but yeah. I don't even know what the the rune combination is for that one yet. I'm still working on the hand cannon. Well, I've got a pro tip for you. If you want to use a site called chalice.recipes, Ooh. you can plug in different combinations. I do not know of these things. And it's like a nice UI, like you just click and pick the runes. Was that, did I see that on Twitter? Was that from um, uh, someone who's, who is it? There's, that, well, there's one that's other. on, um, there's a popular tool that people are using called, uh, what is it? Ishtar, not Ishtar Commander, but uh, what now? Collective. No, I'm thinking about uh, oh Braytech. Oh Braytech, yeah. yeah Braytech.org has yep. one as well now. Um, this one I was using that was up last week, and you can choose your class, and you can choose your runes and the items, and you can play around and see what you'll get, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, if you want something cool. simple, but also excellent. I do recommend this site, Braytech.org. I think they have one as as well now. So pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that's been my reset, dude. I've got so much to do in Destiny. I'm having an absolute blast. I'm really I mean actually, uh I take that back. My son and I have been squeezing in some Mario. Um we actually we're jumping back over to Odyssey. But uh other than that, um it's it's pretty much destiny for me right now. Nice. So there's always you always have room for the switch. Oh yeah, and so by the way, an Ostringer is a hunter that uses hawks in hunting. Oh, there you go. Kind of I'll, I'll try to uh, quit adding that B. And <laughs> what was Very the cool. IS Luna uh, naming nomenclature there? Because it's basically an yes. IS Luna. 
Yeah, basically. Yeah, I have the ornament for it. Like I mentioned, I bought it with Bright Dust Last Reset. Nice. Um, which looks super cool. Takes me back. So cool. Yeah. But that's, yeah, there you go. That's my reset, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I bought that funny ship with Bright Dust that looks like, uh, oh, I don't yeah. know what it looks like. It's like one wing with a beak. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's exactly what it looks that like. It's interesting. It's funny. <laughs> it's an interesting one. I like the, there's another for one. interesting ships, um, sparrows. It's kind of like, somebody described it the best, the best way they described it was uh, like a robot from Batteries Not Included. Remember that movie? <laughs> uh old sounds, steven spielberg I, dude i'm trying it sounds super familiar but i don't know it's like a bunch of little robots look it up it's a fun family movie anyway it looks i like would it, i probably am just not remembering it yeah. i've seen it or it looks like the little times. uh girl robot from flubber oh yeah remember her you're taking it back man yeah, flubber man. flubber dude i watched that recently yeah. with my kids Very they nice. were not as entertained as i was <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed. But hey, speaking of entertainment, how about some Derp Fam discourse? Yeah, dude, we you guys have been awesome recently. We uh we love hearing from you guys and man, we're hearing from the from the Derp Fam and the listeners and guardians out there. Very indeed, cool. Indeed. Uh lead off with an email, Cyborg? Yeah, man. You wanna not you let I'll read it. Okay, I'll you read, read this one. Take a drink of that coffee. Okay. You got coffee tonight? I already drank it all. I need more. I already drank it all. <laughs> I'll just step listen. away. <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. We've got an email from Marius. Congratulations and thanks for the podcast. By the way, guys, you can hear that subject line. We thank you very much. We have been still getting support for the 200 episodes. So keep, keep it coming if you want. We really appreciate it. And uh, for example, here, Marius says, Hi, Arrow and Cyborg. 200 episodes. Great work, guys. Congratulations on the 200th. What is great about your podcast? The dynamic but easy dialogue. You guys sound prepared but relaxed. The news, updates, the funny stuff, or when you provide some perspective on the great and sometimes flammable community, it fits together. I started listening to Destiny Podcast pretty late last summer after two years of playing, but the Reset Podcast is on the weekly Destiny menu. Some context. I mostly listen when I'm cooking dinner. So you are heard throughout the kitchen, and my cats are used to your voices now. Ha ha. (laughs) Cheers from the Netherlands. Dude, that's so funny. Good giddies. Um, Yes. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all the kind words. Um, That's very nice to take the time to send that email. Netherlands. Crazy. Yeah, man. Very cool. Way over there. Thanks for listening. Old, uh, that that prompts, uh, I almost want a geography lesson, Cyborg. You know, I don't know if Derp Fam Road Trip will make it over there. It's a long <laughs> drive. That's all right. We've got another email. This one from a buddy, MD Sailor 771 Pro, Derp Fam community member. He says, Hey, Arrow. Hey, Cyborg. Sailor here. First off, I want to say congrats on 200 episodes. That's actually crazy. You all have been doing this podcast for four years. I was writing in today to ask a few questions about the upcoming Shadowkeep DLC and kind of Destiny altogether. I have this buddy in real life that I've been friends with for about 8 years and he used to be huge into Destiny 1. Me and him would raid, play Trials, grind Strikes, but when Destiny 2 came out he quickly bailed and started playing other games. I recently showed him the Shadowkeep Vidoc and all he could say was during the video was this just proves that they're reusing content even more. They're so unoriginal that they need to bring old bosses back and even an old destination. Basically what my question is, is what are all your thoughts on the fact that they're bringing old areas and bosses back? And what would you say to the people that have the mindset about Destiny 2 in general? Thanks for your time and thanks for all the awesome podcast episodes that you keep putting out. Sailor out. P.S. I want to give... A quick shout out to our raid group. We weren't all able to finish it because all week we had been staying up till four in the morning and people were tired, but two of us ended up getting Crown of Sorrows done and the Jacket of Art is ours. I want to say that everyone in our group is an amazing person and an amazing player as well. I know that if everyone gave it one more hour that last night, we would have had all uh, had it, but I understand. Love you guys. Next raid, we will all clear it in the first week. Nice. Sailor, thanks for the email bud 
Yeah. Um, Great email. What do you think about Bungie bringing back old destinations and bosses? Man, that's it's it's an interesting one. You know, I have a couple buddies, and they are on and off again with Destiny. Right now, they're off, and I definitely get it. I get the taking us back to old places when there seems like there's plenty of new places we could go. I mean, like Forsaken, you know, Dreaming City, stuff like that. Um, I think I feel like there's multiple factors in this particular scenario this fall. Um, personally, I don't mind it. I mean, we're super invested in this game and we know even if we're going back to the moon, there's going to be, I mean, they've even said it themselves. Time has passed. Like they want to go back and see what's happened at some point. I mean, I, I completely get that perspective, like take us somewhere new, advance the story. Let's see what these triangle things are. Maybe we are still going to see that, but you know, you know, take us somewhere brand new, like the dreaming city, you know, they intertwine so much into all that. I mean, we've talked about that on the show before we know when we get, even if we go back somewhere, when we get an expansion, we're getting all kinds of lore, we're getting new gear, we're getting, there's just a lot of stuff they do to add depth to it. Um, but again, I get it. Like I understand, take us to new places more often. I think maybe, I don't know. I want to see what you think about this. We've talked about this. It's interesting this fall because we're kind of, while we're headed in the best place, I think we're, we'll have ever been. They kind of like had to, in a way, start fresh again with the break from Activision and look at their structure and, and spend time on all of these other things. Um, I'm not making excuses for them. I'm just saying that all takes attention, right? Armor 2.0, Eververse, things that maybe they wanted to do, you know, at a certain point or try to make time for. Not necessarily that Activision was stopping them, but the annual pass. How are we going to do this? Tweak things like that from a marketing perspective and, and make, you know, break the barriers down like they're saying. And maybe this fall was like, Hey, you know, what can we do to make it interesting? And, you know, maybe we need to go some back somewhere else for now. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Does that make yeah. sense? Cyborg, yeah, no, I saying? get it. And some of it, I think, long term makes sense. Like, we're going to go back to destinations in the solar system, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. not like we can only ever go to the moon once in one expansion and we never go back. Right. Like, mm -hmm. The whole solar system continues to live and things I happen. I guess maybe people think it's too soon. Yeah. I don't know. I don't right. know. I mean, is it? When is too soon? You know? Right. Yeah. And they are adding areas. It's going to be, what did they say? Like two or three times the original size. Mm -hmm. Everything will have evolved and there will be changes. Um, I, I, I think it's cool, like using the moon as a space to go back to, like, I think it's a great idea. Um, reusing the old bosses and stuff is interesting. I, I'm interested to see how they use them and what the story is and the theme and like what's going to happen. Um, and they mentioned like, it's not as simple as, oh, you just go beat the bad guys. Like you can't kill them. So there's, mm -hmm. there's something else going on and I don't know if, if there's a good thematic like story behind what's going on, um, I'm cool with it, but I, I get outside looking in like for a player that isn't so into it, like I, I get their attitude mm -hmm. towards it. Like, oh, they're not, they're not making anything new, right? Well, and I mean, it was all, it was about the, uh, the races we fight as well, right? Like we got the take in and, you know, that was kind of looked at as like a, just a rehash of what we've had in the past. And even the scorn, you know, while they were new, they kind of were like a extension of the fallen, right? It, just in appearance, it seemed, you know, and, um, you know, I would say, you know, my friends that aren't playing destiny right now, it's less about. I get the perspective, but from what I've observed, it's, it's less about rehashing quote unquote, what looks like, you know, old content and more so about the barriers they're talking about very much. So my friends feel like they're 
they're behind right now. Like there's, they can't invest. I mean, that's what we've heard. Right. And, but it's very much the case with a couple of my buddies. Like there's a lot they'd have to do right now, um, to feel like they were caught up exotics. I would have that they don't have, you know, this or that. And while it would be a lot of content and fun, it's just, you know, it's, uh, it seems like a, a hard entry point. And that's, that's something they're definitely addressing. Um, but I get it though, right? I mean, I think about World of Warcraft, you know, I didn't play that game a ton. Um, I played it some way after it was, you know, extremely popular, but it did kind of seem like, you know, with just from the outside looking into that game, they were always adding brand new spaces. Now I could be wrong. I didn't, I didn't play it a lot. So, but it, you know, Cataclysm and on up, past it seemed like you know cataclysm like i think restructured the world so there's kind of an example of something similar um but you know games do that right i mean you, you go back don't you it's it's not necessarily the exact same i guess a layer to this is like you mentioned and sailor mentioned is seeing crota again and stuff like the bosses returning um you know that kind of maybe rubs people wrong a little bit but I, i'm kind of i think I it's know. kind of exciting <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool, you know, and you're even saying that coming from kind of getting burnt out on nostalgic yeah. exotics and quests and stuff, right? Yeah, so even from me, that perspective. Like, because they're thematic and they're characters that we are familiar with, mm-hmm. like, and we haven't seen a lot of those characters necessarily reused. And like, we haven't seen Eris in Destiny 2, right? You know, like... Mm-hmm there's a good time to do some stuff where you kind of, all right, let's close the loop or let's, let's see where this character is at or this destination's at. And Hey, like here's an interesting creative way for you to bump into Crota again, who you thought was dead and slain, right? Like you killed him in his ascendant realm, but somehow, you know, he's not right. He's back. So it's, I think it's, I, I think it's, intriguing to me but i'm a different type of player that um so it may not be as attractive um to players that are returning to be like oh i'm coming back to see some more of the same old stuff but right it kind of comes down to marketing and stuff i'm really excited to go into the black garden and what that means and why yeah like we haven't well that's the thing is it's four years easy to overlook to even for us you know to uh, i mean we're and that's probably part of why we're invested so much and, and we're looking forward to even you know an expansion like shadow keep is there's so much under the surface there you know with lore and like you mentioned the black garden and stuff like that where i could see someone that's been away for a while maybe that's not as in tune with the lore and, and stuff like that they don't see that angle of it um but there is so much more that's easy to take for granted with each expansion we get, right? With even each season, you know, the books, the lore books we get. And and granted, that's some pe- not some people's cup of tea, right? They want to play the game. They don't care what's going on behind the scenes or with the story um, or anything like that. But I don't know. That's why I started this off by saying it's an interesting one because I totally get it. Um, and I kind of step back and objectively try to look at it as, like from my friend's perspective who aren't playing Destiny right now, but... I'm also excited at the same time. <laughs> like you said, I'm, I'm excited to, to see what's going on with these with these nightmares or whatever and why we're seeing yeah. these bosses again, right? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Anyways, very good question. Uh, it's I think we might all have those friends that we just want to play again. We want them to get that, that uh, the hooks of destiny back in them, right? Yeah, look, there's nothing you can do about haters. Haters going to hate. <laughs> hey, we got a speak pipe next. We do. Yep, from we our do. buddy, uh, Baz Jedi Guardian. I feel like we always need to throw it, AKA everybody. Uh, that's his new name, but it's Serby Leslie. There you go. Facebook King. <laughs> All right, let's take a listen. Hey, Arrow. Hey, Cyborg. And hey, the lovely, beautiful, wonderful Derp Fam community. It's your main man, Mr. Facebook King himself, Baz Jedi Guardian, uh, back again, um, giving you my thoughts about things. And I just want to say massive congratulations, guys, on 200 episodes. I remember, I think I started listening around about episode three or four, just after the Taken King hype train had left the E3 station. And since then, I've never looked back. Um, I think 
where we're at at the moment with, with Destiny. You know, you know, I like to give my thoughts about it. We seem to be in an amazing place. Uh, I'm, I couldn't be happier with the game. You know, all those things. You know, I like to grind up. You know, I like my story. You know, I like those little challenges to to go and hunt and things. Um, it's been good. The Crucible is excellent at the moment. Um, the Menagerie is, is is fantastic. I'm really really pleased, and I, I'm just really looking forward to a really good future. Um, with more players coming in in September, I think it's going to be incredible. So here's to a golden future. It's a shame so many other of the Destiny podcasts have fallen by the wayside, but you've got everyone's support. We love you, and you're fantastic. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Mr. Baz, Jedi Guardian. Thank you so much for the speak pipe. Thanks for the uh, congratulations. We thought maybe you would leave us a speak pipe about our 200th episode. We, uh, you've, uh, you've been listening almost as long as we've had the show. So uh, we thought we might hear from you and we appreciate it. <laughs> Definitely. Don't you think, Cyborg? Facebook king. Yep. Um, Anyways. I'm glad that he is enjoying the game. I know sometimes he's he's come back and forth mm-hmm. with seasons and content, enjoyed some stuff, not the other. But I do feel like the game is in a good place. Even the Crucible, you know, for what it is, there's always complaints, but it's it's come a long way from Destiny 2 Vanilla, right? <laughs> oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and you're right. I mean, I think... Uh, Serbi's even sent us an email or two. I mean, pretty, you know, I won't say aggravated, but he he wasn't playing as much. And it's, it's like you said, it's excellent to hear he's loving it. It's, it's like the, I think we said this in an episode, it's like the golden age right now, right? We're, we're several years in, things are fine tuned. And yeah. it, I mean, there's, there's a lot to do right now. Yeah, Menagerie seems good time. to be a hit with a lot of people. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's going well. Very cool. Yeah. But thanks well. for the speak pipe, man. We appreciate the shout outs and, um, yeah, Keep thanks for the support. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that was your Derp Fam Discourse this week. Listen, if you want to send us your thoughts on things, if you want to ask us a question, give a shout out, whatever it is, send us an email, destinyresetpodcast at gmail.com or a speakpipe, speakpipe.com slash destinyreset. Do it. Do it. I think I say that every week, but yeah, do it. Yeah. Where's our speakpipe challenger, Dark Huntress? Oh, she, I did talk to Dark Huntress, and she is going to send it in next week. She said she had a uh, quite a busy work week this week. Fair so enough. I told her that we, I think we said this back when we had the Speak Pipe Challenge last time. Don't stress, Guardians. If it takes you a couple resets, that's totally fine. Yeah. You don't have to. Don't stress about it. There you go. All right. Do we have any shout outs for new patrons? We do. We uh, got a shout out, Dread Jin. <laughs> I love Dredge that. It. And Black Rain Zero Zero. Yes. I love, love the it. spelling there. Yep. Hey, thank you for supporting us, new patrons. Yes, thank you so if much. If you don't know what a patron is, go to patreon.com slash destiny reset, where for as little as a dollar a month you can support the production budget of our show. And you get a few perks. You get your shout out right here on the show. You get your gamer tag posted on our website as a patron and an invitation to a Discord channel just for our Dirt Fan patrons and supporters. As always, you, every single week and month, we thank all of our supporters, both monetary and otherwise. But hey, if you're still continuing to give or have given in the past uh, to support the show, we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Of course. Well, hey man, where can people find you on the internet? You guys can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Arrow Knight with a zero. What about you, Cyborg? All right. You can find me at Cyborg Sasquatch on Twitter, and you can find us at Destiny Reset on Twitter. Also on the web, www.destinyresetpodcast.com. That's your source for all things DRP, including links to subscribe on your favorite app of choice, which, by the way, we're on Spotify now and Podbean. Ooh. Check us out. So cool. Hey, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we're one away from 300 reviews. But we do have some new reviews we want to shout out this week. Who are they? Do it, Cyborg. You do it because you've been challenging them. We're at 299. Let's see if you can get us that one more. We go Black Rain, Opa the Chef, 225, and Disgust, 462. Thank you for your reviews. Hey, let's get one more so we can break 300. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, 
and you haven't left us a review yet, please do. It helps us get seen and heard by more listeners just like you. Yes. And we always appreciate uh, all reviews and and the written ones as well. It's always nice to to uh, hear from you, Guardian. Some nice supporting words. We we like to yeah. check out Keeps the reviews. Keeps us going. So appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, man. Well, I think we can call this a show. I think so, yeah. I'm going to go grind some things and stuff. Sweet. Have fun. You too. All right, guys. Until next reset, have fun playing Destiny 2. And take care, Guardians. 